Hey guys, this is Kid Rob speaking, and today we start a very, very special little series. Something that has not been done on this channel before. Something that is about development. And that is because we just reached the $100 per month patronage on uh, Patreon. That is amazing. Thank you very much to all who support me, especially the, the big, the big chunkers. The, the massive chunkers, two knights of the table round, chipping in with a lot of money, and one of them, yes, Sean, you um, you have made me made me do this a little ahead of time. Uh, I appreciate that. Though. So uh, let's get started. What is this about? Well, we are going to produce, uh, to make, and produce, to code even, uh, and design. On top of that, a program that simulates counters runs. With all the accurate drop statistics, it will be doing uh, some cubing automatically and it will um, show you all the runes you find and it will um, then determine how many runs you need on average and the mean and with certain confidence intervals. How many runs you need in order to get a certain set of runes that you yourself define. Because I am a uh, producer and game designer myself, I think we have to uh, not just jump right into it, but do it s at least somewhat properly. I'm not going to write a friggin' design document, uh, for fuck's sake, it's just a little tool, right? Uh, you would think that, but usually you would have to if you want to do it really, really properly. I would never do that for a private project such as this, but uh, if you want to be a bit more professional, you would well, at least want to try to somewhat outline what you are going to do. And I sat down for about 20 minutes and wrote an A5 page of information uh, regarding this project just to outline it a little bit. And I have that page photographed here. I always write it in my little notebook and it's really handy. As you can see, I've already downloaded the runes, the rune icons. Which is really handy. Oh, in case you didn't know, this this just blew my mind. Just check this out. Maybe maybe you're just saying like, oh, Kill Rob, you're such a noob. You are such a noob. Did you know that you can just do like this, and it copies <laughs> copies the, over the image? It's like what the fuck? I never knew this. In all the time, in all the time with Windows, I don't know. Well, maybe it's just my Brave browser that supports it. But I would assume that this is a, a common feature. Anyway, so now now you can save your porn faster. Um, any, anyway, so let's take a look at the project outline for this. And, well, how, how the whole project is supposed to come together. This is all. This is my design document and you will be not really able to read it, I guess. So let's take a closer look. And it's not very sharp because it's dark in my room and I had to take the photo at like ISO 1600 or something. Um, anyway, so our project is called Diablo 2 Countess Run Simulator. All right, so far so boring. Uh, the goals are, so you start out with what is your actual goal with what you are going to do? Your design pillars, so to say. Okay, our de main design pillar is that it's supposed to simulate countess runs um, to give all kinds of different data and for different difficulties. And that is runes after so and so runs, uh, runs till you get a certain rune, or runs till you get a certain rune word or runes combo. All right, so far so easy, I guess. What kind of metrics do we want to have? What is the end goal to um, have from the simulator? Well, what would be interesting, like I uh, quickly mentioned, would be the average, the mean, and then certain certain certainties, certain uh, confidence intervals, like the, the point that the number of runs to be 90% sure that you have all runes at that point, or to be 30% sure that you have those runes at that point. Maybe that is a value you actually want to set. Interesting. Okay, cool. Number of cubings involved because that takes time and it takes other resources. Very important. Uh, time to actually run this whole thing in order to get it. So maybe we do need some kind of um, number of seconds input 
that you can give to the um, to the program such that it can then tell you how for how long you will be running this mess in order to get what you're after that seems to be come somewhat useful too what about the UI? Well, it needs to be simple, it needs to be compact, probably windowed mode, and I don't think we want to go over uh, 720p for the resolution of the, the little tool. And that is because I do want to run windowed mode, um, because then I don't need to, uh, to do any UI scaling for full screen and whatnot. But it all kind of comes natural. I can place it in absolute pixels, which is really handy. Makes things a little more straightforward, more simple, easier to show when I'm coding, because I'm going to show you the coding as well. Not like me sitting there and thinking for 15 minutes, not talking, but but rather like the, the major steps in it and how I solved certain, certain problems. Okay, so we need to have a compact UI, a simple UI. One that kind of looks like Diablo, or at least has some kind of theme to it, which uh, which isn't completely out, right? So black, red, orange, and white is what I came up with. That is the color theme we're going to use. And I'm going to do most of my designing stuff in Adobe InDesign. That is where I design UI. Also for automation, by the way. That is how we get our buttons and whatnot. I'm, I'm doing them in InDesign and then just provide the uh, PNG images and then uh, my colleagues do the magic with them. Um, anyway, so what more? Tabs for modes, yes. Not everything will fit on every single tab and I think, or on uh, one screen rather. And I think it is important to differentiate the, oh, sorry, the different modes of operation. What exactly they will be, we shall see. But we have a rough idea from just these little notes here. And then, that should all be good, yes, data. What kind of data do we get? Well, data is the big thing here, and data analysis uh, in particular. It needs to be pretty solid when it comes to data. I'm I'm not so sure if we want to do uh, if we want to do static uh, data structures, which would simplify things, or if we want to have them dynamic. Um, probably dynamic for the number of, of runs, but I we'll see. It doesn't it doesn't really matter right now. We'll we find some solutions that work. Uh, number of runs, yes, runes found. Seems reasonable, right? Uh, runes required. Those are the ones you set yourself. Uh, rune find chances, and those are hard coded. Let me just quickly go there. Rune runs. Here we have our nice overview you have seen. Oh, yeah, by the way, if you have no clue what I'm talking about here, maybe watch the Rune, um, the Counters mini series I've done for Diablo 2, where I did 300 runs uh, in each difficulty of the game or for the counters and recorded all the runes I found and then made stats all kinds of stats pretty cool stuff for every difficulty uh, massive pie charts <laughs> yes exactly and bar bar graphs and lots of lots and lots of data analysis lots and lots of data analysis and this massive thing this thing I made a poster out of it's amazing it was so much work so much work um, yeah, okay. Uh, back to our little image here. So what do we need? Um, all the all the data that comes out of each run, basically what runes you found and how close you or if you are at your goal or if you can get to your goal via cubing and all that stuff. Number of repetitions needed and list of run repetition data. That is the big list of all the data you gather. So how is this going to work just as uh, from a statistics point of view? Because you could say that, oh, okay, well, I want to have a tal and a, uh, an F room, right? Okay, yeah, that's a stealth armor. And I want to run that in normal difficulty. Oh, oh how, how interesting. So what happens then? Well, if the game would only repeatedly run the counters until you have found both of these runes, that doesn't really tell you that much because that could be two runs, it could be one run, it could be ten runs. If you're Mr. Llama, it's probably more like twelve runs. Um, uh, uh, anyway, so once you have determined what you want, one repetition does not suffice in order to get you the data you want. So what we want to do is to define a goal and then have 
the uh, game, the game, I'm saying the game, the tool make repeated runs until you've reached your goal. It records the number of runs that you needed in order to reach that goal, saves that and then makes another repetition and makes repetitions until it has done something like maybe a thousand, maybe 10,000 repetitions where it for each repetition tries to achieve the goal you have set. And that has the effect that um, basically we take we take the randomness out of it to some degree, but at the same time, we are not discarding the randomness. We still have access to how random it is via the means and via the confidence intervals because we are, we are recording how many runs it took with each repetition. And if we sort that list and then look at how many data points we have above and below us for a certain number of um, runs like how many percent are above and below us that gives you the chance of within these this num number of runs you will have that chance to find the runes you were looking for that is potentially really interesting data maybe it's not that useful but if you uh, ever wondered like oh i really want to get that um rune and that uh, that pool for for my uh, stone does it require those two? I believe it does. Um, uh, anyway, yes. So then you just put it in and click simulate. And then the simulator spits out the um, number of runs after you've given it like, okay, I want to be 70% certain, 70% level certain that I found all runes by that time. And then it tells you, well, that's 250 runs, mate. And you're like, fucking hell, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to get some forum gold and buy them instead, <laughs> because I'm extremist. Uh, oh, oh, the, oh, oh, the puns, the puns are right. Um, okay, so, um, what, what more do we need? UI, UI. We definitely need UI because this tool basically is only made out of UI. So settings via some kind of plus minus buttons and a data field seems simple enough, right? Then uh, some kind of buttons. They need a uh, passive mode, so they like deactivate it, so that you can't press it. They need a cold. They need a hot, and they need a hover over. I think those should be the modes we need. And uh, just normal functionality: start, quit, and change the the tabs on top or something. We do need some kind of progress bars for the runs because this simulation progress can. The process can take a while, right? If you're if you're running in hell difficulty or simulating running in hell difficulty, and you want to have some pretty fancy runes, and maybe maybe there's a, a vex rune in there or something, some something crazy, then yeah, better prepare for this taking a while. Um, and then we do need to display all kinds of data, averages, means, yeah, and record all of that. Maybe some <laughs> record number runs, like the lowest and highest number of runs needed so yeah we, we f totally found a vex and a pool in the first try <laughs> so, yeah that, that happens often okay so other miscellaneous stuff um sounds yeah we could take some sounds from the game like a rune dropping or being placed in inventory maybe um maybe some sound snippets from uh, uh, your blood will boil and stuff like that um also outputs we have no outputs and we have no inputs. No custom files, that is way out of scope. No custom settings for drop chances or whatever. That is way out of scope for this one. Okay, miscellaneous then. Uh, we start with a splash screen. Maybe have some patron patron names on, and on the credit screen or something. Would be nice. And the loop we've already talked about. So it does its repetitions, runs, checks what's, what's currently uh, in inventory, so to say and then concludes the, if all runs are done or if we need to do another repetition. So, uh, yes, exactly. That's all, no, it goes to the next repetition then if all the runs are done for the one repetition. And if all the repetitions are done, then it goes to all done. Yes, it's a little convoluted here. That's not what I planned, planned for it looking, uh, but yeah, went out of bounds. Out of bounds, guys. I'm, I'm not Picasso. Uh, so, okay, that's out of the way now. 
we have all our data, we have a basic set of ideas for how that program should look, or well, what, what it should do at least, and now, basically, the question is what do we start with? I don't think I will be doing any programming today, but I think what is a good place to start in this is to get a basic understanding of what the UI would look like, because this tool is mainly about UI, and the UI, what the UI looks like will drive a lot of the coding. So I'm going to code, by the way, in, uh, where, do I, where do I have this, uh, in uh, Game Maker Studio software. Here we go, not in Artsy Draft, no. Um, in Game Maker Studio 2, in desktop version. Already have used it for 425 hours. Wow, crazy. Um, Alright, so disclaimers about this. I'm not a professional programmer. I have dabbled in it. And I, I think I can pretty easily make this program work with a few stumbles along the way. But don't expect any magic from me. That, that is all I, I ask of you. And uh, I hope this whole project, as it is going to be summarized in this little video series, will be useful to you. So what I'm going to sit down now and do is to draft a little, uh, a little UI in InDesign. Define my colors, try to find some good stuff, try to find a good style for buttons and data fields, and keep it simple, but functional. Okay, see you back in a bit. Now the very first thing I want to do here is uh, just to get a basic background which I can layer on the UI to. So um, what I did is go out and, oh, wait a second, I still have to color it black. Black is our base color because when we go here you can see that, oh, one sec, let me uh, draw real quickly something on here just this little square and we do have uh, an umrun if we place it here in InDesign you see that ah yep black is the background color of choice we don't have transparent backgrounds for these runes so it needs to be black I want to have black as my base background color but I don't want it to be entirely flat and this will just be a placeholder for now but I um, I found, yes, th this this background image, okay, looks looks quite nice. I think it might have been some Blizzard Diablo 3 promotion thingy. Um, anyway, so I'm going to take this, uh, desaturate it, and just slightly layer it into the background so that we have some structure going there, and then I add UI to it. Okay, at this point, uh, I only have that background that is layered in at uh, something like 50% opacity. It's a placeholder for now, but it's looking really fancy. Um, and, uh, well, I'm using my standard font that kind of looks a little bit like Diablo. And I'm keeping it simple in black and white for now. So, yeah, let's, let's talk about that. Like, coloring of the UI. Well, we know that the runes will have to be on black background. So they will have to be in their own data fields next to numbers and whatnot. And we are going to have color. And at that point, he was rudely interrupted. Rudely interrupted and continued building shit. So uh, where were we? Well, um, we think we were talking about UI color. So what I've done here is, as you see, advanced things a little bit. I'm quite happy with the, the first draft of these mode select buttons. And the only thing I've done here really is to select this uh, fancy inset style of a button with a uh, framing of two pixels in uh, my own color swatches I've made for this UI. So I have various grays I've just defined. It, I only want to make sure that things are consistent in here. I have various reds and I have the orange for the rune word, uh, not rune words, but rather rune names. And uh, yes, I'm using my standard Diablo-esque font. It works really well for these main buttons, but it doesn't work well for the, for the names of the runes at all. And that is why I choose a kind of standard font here. And um, yeah, I think overall 
this kind of color scheme seems to be working. I mean, it doesn't look too terrible. It keeps it keeps it quite dark, but also to the point. And that is what I want to achieve. Like this would be um, the the version of the selected button. I think this is rather obvious. So what I've done here is just um, go in. Where, where where is this stuff? Go in here. Go into effects, and I've selected to make an inner glow for this frame. Just a very slight one. Just very slight opacity there, five percent only. And then have given the text. So this is the. Uh, Let's see, this is the intense red, and these are the uh, red medium, right. And the intense red, as you can see, I've also given a little bit of a glow. So things will look rather nice, considering that it is a very, very basic uh, basic way of making these things. I, I really like InDesign for making UI in general. It's not the most fancy UI. It's not very animated, uh, and, and with that I mean basically not at all. But uh, this gives uh, gives me all the tools here to make a simple but um, rather appealing UI. I mean, yeah, I'm not not quite sure about the the coloring of the framing and here. This looks a little bit too chunky, but um, and when we go in here and change this one, for instance, to just a yeah. I guess that works. I guess that works a little better. What I'm worried about here, when I look at this, it looks very busy because there's too much structure inside. It looks fancy, don't get me wrong, but we are very zoomed in right now. That's not how you would view the UI. You would view it at something like this and just imagine two rows full of this shit because there are all the runes need to be fitted on here and I think then it might be a little bit too awkward. Although from this, from this distance, it almost looks like a a rounded shape. Maybe that works. Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not entirely certain. Uh, we we can make both shapes and then just try them out. It's easy enough to do. Just need to have uh, need to save these button images in their respective states. So um, I think this is a, a pretty good first look at various UI elements and what we could do with them. This is very much a draft. You have to start somewhere. Just start slapping on items you you just that just come to mind and start ordering them and it will naturally grow. One little hint for you guys who have problems starting or getting started on something new. For instance, let's just take the example of writing. I, I, <laughs> I'm quite extreme with this nowadays because I always had issues getting started with something new. You'd probably think like, uh, Kira, really? You? Yes, yes, me. Yes, indeed, me. So for instance, when I'm writing anything, I don't even capitalize the first letter. I later go back and correct it. But I know, I, I get into my mind, whatever you write now will be changed anyway. It doesn't matter. Just write anything that comes to mind right now in a very drafty format. And it doesn't matter if it's utter garbage what you're writing right now. Just write the first sentence. And once you have the first sentence, <laughs> even if it's garbage and will be completely discarded later on, you have a starting point. And that is so important in every single project. That is why I started out with my little list here of this, because it is a starting point. Just write down something garbagey. D2 CRS goals. Yeah, simulate basic shit. Yes, exactly. That is how you get started on your projects. You have to start somewhere and don't tell yourself that it has to be perfect from the start. It will never be. So just place down the first items you will certainly discard them later, but it is a start. And this stuff here actually looks quite, quite cool. With this black and white background, the color, the, the red really sticks out at you. I think this is a, this will probably stay even. Hmm. I don't quite know about this placement. Maybe I need to place them in one line down at the bottom, maybe set in the center, like um, one line and uh, center them in the frame. 
No idea, but I, I shall continue building this until we have a reasonable set of um, the UI or a UI draft which would be somewhat functional. But I think this is already enough for today. Yeah, so we have looked at the overview what there is to do just to get a rough estimate of the scope of things and what we are aiming to do then um, next stuff coming up was just open up uh, InDesign and start slapping something down and uh, define a color palette that suits you and that suits you the task at hand and because once you have a color palette you can or you have a resource to draw from great and uh, this is by no means final, but <laughs> because it does, ma does make very little sense. But you can see, it, it, we're getting somewhere already. This is just the UI draft, this has nothing to do with programming just yet. But once we have designed all the assets, or a good uh, clue about what the assets are supposed to look like, then I will just be exporting them to Photoshop and save them as PNGs. And then we have our assets for the in-game tool. And in-game, not in-game. Won't be in-game, we'll be outside of game. We'll be for the game maker made tool. Yes, that is more correct. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the uh, first episode so far. The exit button is hiding behind uh, the layer screen. Um, I hope you enjoyed this first episode. There are many more to come until this tool is done. And yeah, looking forward to that. This will be fun. I hope this has been... Uh, somewhat fun and maybe even maybe even helpful all right hope you enjoyed and see you guys next time